Hello and welcome to a vlog which has been a long time coming. Well overdue. Well overdue. I think the last time me and Joe actually filmed a fishing session together where we both had rods out was when, well, back in September. Similar weather conditions, but yeah, actually thinking about when it was, it was cold nights but hot days. Yeah, I'd say September was about the time. We've all been in the same boat, like we haven't been able to fish as much, been days only and certain things and being a few hours apart, it's just not been viable as restrictions have lifted now, we've got out and it feels almost nostalgic it's been that long really. Yeah, it? yeah, it does. It, yeah, like I say, it was back in September, so mm -hmm. uh, a good, well, six, seven months ago really. And um, you blanked on that session, didn't you? Just because I know you're going to get in the fact that you've had a productive start to this session, I just thought I'd slip that one in there. We are at Wellham. I believe well, it's called. Yeah, Wellham Estate Lake. Wellham Estate Lake, and this is sort of near Leicester sort of area, so that's that's where we've travelled to, and it's a lovely little estate lake. I think it's around the six, seven acre size, I would guess. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it looks like it. It's um, it's quite deceiving. When you first get here, it looks a lot smaller than, yes. than it actually is, and then walking around and actually casting about, it's, um, it's quite a bit bigger. So, I mean, you might be wondering why Joe mentioned that I've caught fish and we're doing an intro now, but it's been a really full on day. So yes. we've had to make the most of the light that we have had when, when getting shots of the lake and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, we just haven't had a time to do an intro yeah. straight away. Often, so. When we're filming other people, we can put all our effort into filming them because they're doing all the work for finding fish. But when we come and film ourselves, we want to get the fishing stuff sorted so that we've got some fish for the cameras, which you've done very, very well so far, which yeah, we'll on to uh, shortly. Yeah. But uh, from what we understand, this place has quite a bit of history to it. So it's it's well over 100 years old. There's a there's a hut on an island just behind us, which I think was an old uh, boating uh, sort of reception area where you'd log in and take boats out, something to do with an old girls' school, from what we understand. We're not 100% sure on all the information on it, but it's a very old lake, and that's what we yeah. can take from it. So you've got the classic sort of overhanging trees, quite silty lily, ped, uh, lily beds here and there. Mm -hmm. Lots of opportunities to walk around, stalk some fish out, hopefully, or potentially in this session. Um, but it's just a lovely place to be as well. It's yeah. just so quiet here as well. Yeah, it is. And like Joe said, the lily, lily beds are starting to come up now and they're just about breaking the surface, which kind of leads us on nicely to what we've been doing and, mm -hmm. and how we've gone about it. So we obviously got the rods out as soon as we could because we wanted to maximise the time of actually having rods out and, and having a chance with catching fish. So in my swim, I started off with, I mean, the margins are really nice here. So I started off having a rod down each margin and then I had one out to a lily, lily bed, which is, uh, I think it's about 50 yards uh, directly in front of me. So just having the rods on, or the middle rod on the edge of that, I thought it was going to be a good chance for a bite this time of year with the bed starting to hit the surface. There's loads of protection, loads of nutrients. So I thought that was a, a good shout. And like I say, I had one rod in either margin as well. Um, the margins are quite deep here. They're probably about four foot all around. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll, we'll get onto that when we move over to me because I was sort of leading around and feeling yeah. the depth. So yeah, yeah. So they're they're quite deep margins and they're really solid as well. Every time I was just kind of playing around with a lead, it was a, a solid donk each time. So I thought the margins were going to be a really good shout. Um, so that said, I did get a bite quite quickly off the the middle rod, which was up against the pads. Um, so we'd seen a bit of activity out there as well. So I thought it was well worth putting a second rod onto that because otherwise I'm kind of hedging my bets having two margin rods when if one goes there's a good chance of it spooking the other one so I thought it was best to put two out onto the pads because there's a, a bigger area and the the lily pad bed which I'm actually fishing to goes around the back of the island as well so it's a, potentially a good patrol route for the fish so I put a second rod onto that and not long after moving my second rod onto it I ended up with a second bite from the first rod but yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be keeping both rods on there for the night. Um, tell you a little, little bit about bait and what I'm using and, and I'll show you the fish as well. So, But yeah, like you say, it's been a really, really productive start yeah. to the day. Obviously you've been... Not, yeah, well, same sort of story in my swim. I was feeling around with the, in the margins and both sides just feel nice and solid. Not, not all the way along, so to the right side there's a a pad bed that's starting to come up. If you go into the pad bed, it's a bit silty, a bit soft. You just come just off of that and it's nice and solid. So a really nice drop on that. I just put a rig down there. Same on the left side, I saw a nice overhanging bush. I thought surely as tight under that as possible. Nice bit of shelter, it looks good for a fish. But again, it is quite silty under there until I came just out of it and it was nice and clear once again. So the left rod's gone down on that. So 
other than what you were saying about having both in the margin and thinking maybe one would spook the other, I've gone for one in each margin and then one has gone to the far margin. So I'm kind of cutting out all kind of mid-water possibilities. But from what we understand from previous anglers that have been here, even this week, they've had some fish from the far margin. So deceptively far, actually. Trying yeah. to cast over there and clipping up. It's 80 yards, pretty much exactly 80 yards to the far margin. So I put on just a, a, a simple rig on that one, not even a stick mix or anything. Just wanted to feel that lead down. And it went down with a nice crack, even at that distance, and a bit of a crosswind. And then I walked around and uh, chuck some bait in on top of that. Yeah. I've not had any anything so far other than a little liner. Sorry, what we no, say? I was going to say it's probably worth noting that um, the far margin or the far bank is very, very narrow. Mm -hmm. So there's not swims along the far bank. You could probably do a little bit of stalking, but I can't imagine it actually gets fished that much from that yeah. side. So getting that tight to it and basically trying to get tighter than mm -hmm. everyone else could be a real edge. And yeah. I do think that could end up doing you a fish tonight. And I, I could gone down the wash line setup but at 80 yards i think it's probably pushing it on the sort of distance i want to comfortably use a washing line setup and i got it nice and close i felt it down nicely so i'm confident in how that landed but if tomorrow nothing's really happened i'll just wrap out the rods probably one rod length further land it on the bank walk around and lower the rig in by hand and just maybe tuck it right in nicely because it looks good and when we walked around earlier we saw a, a, a plume of uh, a cloud that sort of came up from the margin yeah. from just further down where we clearly spooked the fish. So mm. it's, it's nice. Well, one, like we said, to actually be out fishing again yeah. together. Yeah, a lake we've never seen before. And uh, just from what we've seen, some of the fish that are in there, some nice fish to go out. And we've jabbered on long enough. You've had a couple, so we might as well jump into that. But hopefully some more happens throughout the evening. So I said to Joe about half an hour ago, I'm sure that middle rod's going to go, the one in the pads. And uh, yeah, about half an hour later, absolute screamer, resulting in this lovely dark little common. Uh, this seems to be what most of the fish in here actually look like. Um, it's one of the smaller ones, but they do seem to all be really nice dark fish. And that's, uh, it can be unusual for an estate lake because normally they're quite pale sort of coloured fish where the water is very murky. But in here, they all seem to be really nice dark fish. So more than made up and... Uh, I have got two rods in the margin, but the pads just look so inviting. So I might have to put a second out to the pads um, overnight. And after it, after it doing this fish as well, it's kind of made me think that even more so. I mean, they're not up properly yet. They're just about touching the surface, but it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a place that's going to be holding fish. So I slip this one back. I've got the rod back out already. Cause I thought if I did have one bike, then there's every chance of a quick second one. Um, so yeah, let's get this fish back and I think I might have to change my tactics and put a second over there for the night. So I was just about to sit down and do a little talk about the bait that I'm using and how I'm approaching it when uh, the middle rod screamed off. This is the one that I caught that first fish on. Put it straight back out as soon as I landed the fish in the hope for another quick bite. And about half an hour later, just bobbing hit the top, and it ripped off again. So hopefully we get this one in, so we have another one to show you. There we go. Strong fish that. Okay, so there we go, that is the second one of the session so far. And uh, only about 15 minutes after I put the second rod out to the pad, so definitely glad I made that move to have two bites from there. It was the rod that I put back, or put back out originally. So it wasn't the one I've only just put out, but even so, it's only been out there about an hour um, after having that first fish earlier on. So yeah, it definitely gave a good account of itself. Again, on the little trim down S-Core pop-up. So I'll talk you through a little bit about the bait and, and how I'm using it now. Well, after I've slipped this one back. And uh, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully we're on to, we'll be on to a few more. It's uh, definitely a good start. We've got two nights ahead of us. So yeah, made up with another little common like this. So let's slip it back and then we'll talk about the bait. Okay, so I just slipped that second little common back and uh, I'm gonna just show you the bait that I'm using. So I'm using a couple of different methods because I've now got two rods on the pads and I've got one in the margin. The margin rod, I'm using the bushwhacker so I can actually ship it a little way along because the whole margin feels really nice, but I'd rather, it be a little bit further away from the swim so it's nice and solid where it is going down as well so 
where I'm shipping that in the in the baits or in the bushwhacker, I can use a slightly different bait to what I can get away with in the little PVA mesh sticks which I'm using in the pads. So the sticks are literally just a really fine crumb, just ground down boilies, and I've been using the 10 mil S Core original boilies because where they're so small already, they grind down really nice and fine. So literally just filling fill in the crusher with a load of 10 mil boilies. Just giving it a quick, quick blitz, and then it comes out nice and fine like that. Like I say, the, the mix that I'm actually using for the bushwhacker or for the margin rod is a little bit different. So I've got a whole combination in here. I've got whole 10 mil boilies, I've got 15 mil chops, whole 15 mil boilies, and then some really fine crumb as well. So the same crumb that I'm using in stick mix, I'm actually using in here as well. So again, like I say, just chopping down the 15 mil boilies in half. Just with a little chopper like this. And just put them in and then get halves every time. Just push it through. Um, so yeah, chops, crumb, and whole boilies of both sizes. So it gives loads of different kind of sizes of bait, loads of different, um, or well, loads of attraction because all the boilies are split, crumb down. So it also kind of coats the area. So instead of just having whole boilies and then the carp going around picking them up and then when they're gone, they're gone, by using different sizes, things will start kind of settling into the seal and it's going to keep all that attraction there. So if a carp does come over, then even if the main bulk of the bait is gone, there's still going to be that attraction in the area. So far, both rods or both fish have been on the rods out to the pads on the little stick mix. But I do think now it's coming into the evening, that could be when the margin rod seems to wake up a little bit when everything's nice and quiet overnight. I do think that might end up doing a bite. So. Like I say, it is coming into evening now. The sun's dipping just behind, or just in front of me, behind the cameras. So I'm going to sign out for now, but we will uh, we'll keep you updated what happens overnight and speak to you in the morning. morning and it was a, a pretty good night for me actually um, and well unfortunately it was off to a bad start the first bite I had was on the left margin rod um, just the hook pull the hook just came straight out so a really uh, unfortunate way of starting but the rest of the night was good to me so the second bite came from the middle rod which I've cast over to the the far um, the far margin which was about 80 yard chuck got it nice and uh, perfect before bed and that one was what went off first I'll show these fish in a second, of course. And then uh, in the middle of the night, because I knew the distance of what it was on the wrapping sticks, 20 and a, 20 and a quarter wraps, and uh, I've got a visual marker on the far bank where the trees are, and there's also a pile on behind, so I know roughly what I'm aiming at. So I knew the distance, where to aim, put the rod back out there, felt it down with a crack as well. So I was really happy with how that went out. And that rod went again uh, just before first light. So another uh, lovely fish, which I'll show you in a second. And the plan of attack today is pretty much just carry on as it was. So that rod clearly having done two bites is gonna stay there. Um, I'm gonna put that back out properly again this morning because I didn't recast it after the uh, second capture. I got back in the sack for an hour or so to try and get a bit more sleep, but uh, that will be going back out next and then uh, the other ones are just chop and change see what what the day brings see if i can see any fish i might move around but um yeah as soon as i start getting results somewhere i'll probably stick to that but for now let's get these fish out and show you how lovely they are and this is the result of the first bite so uh, from what we understand it's predominantly commons in here so it's quite nice to see a mirror come out and a beautiful one at that slightly different on both sides so i'll try and show you both sides absolutely lovely colors on it lovely scale pattern so yeah a bit of variation Hopefully we start getting amongst some of the bigger ones in here, which we uh, know to be in here. But it might just be a case of getting through some of the smaller ones. But as I said, I'll add another one after this one, which I'll show you in a second. But a lovely way to start the session. Well, first fish of the session anyway. Beautiful. Let's quickly show you the other side as well. And there's the other side. As I said, just as pretty on the each side. So a lovely way to start it off. Lovely days from a beautiful lake. And the sun's just come up as well. Looks like it's going to be another lovely day. Lovely, full of lovely load more fish as well. Let's get it back. 
and here is bike number two. After repositioning that rod in the dark last night, clearly hitting the spot, this one was away. Both fights very similar, dropped back on the indicator as you'd expect, some so tight to the far margin. And then they just came in like a wet sock as if I just lost the fish as bringing in a twig and then fought in the margins. And uh, lovely fish, about the average stamp we believe in here. And uh, some of the irregularities in its scale patterns makes us think that this could potentially be a, a, a pure, fully scaled mirror. But um, we'll let the comment section decide whether it is or not. But uh, it's a very pretty fish nonetheless, whether it's common or fully scaled. But very happy with that. And uh, yeah, two fish in the first night. We got another night ahead of us in order today. Hopefully there's more to come, especially as the rods are now on positions which I know are producing fish, tactics that are working. And I'll show you a bit later on the actual setup I'm using and, and baits and things. But for now, if I can just keep catching and keep enjoying myself, then uh, that's what it's all about. Happy days. Unfortunately, we had some mic issues in this scene, which wasn't picked up on at the time. But just to talk you through what I'm doing is, as you can see behind me, uh, in front of the swim, is the two trees that I'm using as a marker. Just between the two trees, there's a little stubby tree that you can see in the day, and that's what I'm casting to the base of. But at night, you can't see that so well. But I know that the tree to the left is pretty much what I'm aiming at. I just want to aim just to the right of that, and I know my distance is 20 and a quarter wraps. So as long as I line up with that, hit the distance right, I know I'm landing in a good position. Now, as you can see, it took me several attempts to get this cast exactly where I wanted it. And, and although it's pretty clear over there on that line, I wanted to be accurate because that's exactly where I've had the two fish from before. And I didn't want to be complacent and think that would do. I wanted to make sure I was on exactly that spot. And once I was, I was happy. It was then a case of wandering around with a bit of bait and chucking some in on that spot. Okay, so obviously Joe's had a pretty good start to the morning with um, a couple of nice fish early on. Um, it was very quiet for me, nothing happened at all, not even a beep overnight. So I've, uh, I've reeled my rods in and I've come around to a quiet little corner of the lake where it hasn't seen any pressure in the whole time that we've been here. Last night I came around and put a little bit of bait in a few spots, so I'm just going to spend an hour or so around here in the hope of getting a quick bite. It's a really nice, like I say, quiet area. It's on the back of the wind as well. So where it's been cold east of these for the last couple of days and hopefully there might be a few fish sitting around on the back of it. So we'll see. I'm just gonna just gonna get the rod out, just tie it to some pads and just hope that something comes along. <laughs> um camera's running and I've got a mic on. So Curly literally was just walking around. So uh, I'm guessing going bait up your swim. Yeah. And the line just started pulling tight. Didn't take any line of the clutch of, or anything, but it just started twitching. And uh, yeah, I'm into, into fish. I was only out for about, probably about 10 minutes in this spot. And uh, like I said earlier, is one of the spots that I baited last night. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pads around, so. I'd like to try and get in pretty quickly, but I had a quick glimpse at him and it looks like a nice mirror, which, uh, yeah, there's, there doesn't seem to be that many mirrors in the lake. So it's well worth coming around here for a little bit. Oh, might be a little bit hairy to land this. Come on. Well. Yeah. Oh, get in. Oh, what a lovely fish. Yes. So I know there's that old cliche of size doesn't matter, but I'm going to say what everyone says when they look like this, it really doesn't matter. And I mean, this is what fishing's all about. Just, it's not all about going and chasing massive fish all the time and sitting there for days on end. Like, I, you should be getting a buzz from something like this, moving around to a quiet little corner where you've been feeding the night before and just having that little opportunist moment. And when it all pays off and you get a result like this, like, this is a stunning little fish. And yeah, it really doesn't matter that it's not a 40. It's probably 12, 13 pound, but it's a, a proper old dark scaly fish and yeah this is uh this is as much of a buzz for me as 
as it is to be catching a 30 or a 40. Like, just when things like that pay off, it's, it, just, it just feels amazing. So yeah, well happy with this one and definitely the nicest I've had so far this session and, and probably this year, to be honest. It's a proper old estate lake mirror. Can't get much better than that, can it? Well, after, uh, after landing that lovely little dark scaly mirror, I quite enjoyed doing a little bit of stalking, so I thought oh, I'm going to have to have a go at one of the other little spots that I baited last night. And uh, again, about 10 minutes, just dropped it in under a, a nice overhanging tree, dropped it in with the bushwhacker. Yeah, literally out there for about 10 minutes. And uh, the rod just screamed off, melted away when it was just on the deck, upside down. Oh, that was a, that was a, that was a good old Sorry. fish. Just showed out there. Um, yeah, 10 minutes on the deck, rod was melting away. And uh, after a bit of a hairy bite, because it was in quite a snaggy little, uh, little part of the lake, did manage to land this lovely upper double mirror. So again, it's not one of the monsters and uh, there are a few monsters in here, I think. But yeah, absolute stunner and get more than made up with it. Awesome little fish, lovely scales, nice dark mirror. Yeah, definitely enjoying this session. Let's get it back and uh, got one more spot that I baited last night that I haven't fished yet. So it'd be rude not to have a little go, wouldn't it? So I've just come back around to the margin where I just had that nice upper double. And uh, I was going to try one of the other snags that I put a bit of bait in last night that I haven't fished yet. But after walking around, there is, I have seen a couple of swirls and bits just back where I caught the, uh, the upper double from. So I'm just going to ship it back out there. I'm only going to give it 20 minutes, half hour, and if nothing happens, then I'll try the other two spots again. So I'll try the one that I haven't fished yet, which is just a little bit further down the bank. And I'll try back in the corner where I had that first um, old dark uh, mirror from. So yeah, just going to ship this out now. Literally just using a small hand for the bait, so hopefully just enough to get a bite. And then just a little um, cut down S core pop up. This into the spoon. I'll ship this out. So nice and discreet, this pole. It's ideal for this sort of approach. So there we go, again, just 15 minutes under that bush, it absolutely roared off. I'm sure that bush rack is a big edge, the fact you get no disturbance when you're dropping the lead in. And uh, like I said, I saw a couple, a couple of fish swirling about in that margin. So it was well worth going, going for that one again, even though I'd only recently caught one out of there. Um, I think with the lack of disturbance, uh, managing to get in quite quickly, um, it's, all, it's all paid off and yeah, another lovely plump little little mirror in the net so i'm going to get this one back and i still fancy my chances on uh, on another one of the spots that i've primed so a little bit further down this bank behind me um so i'm going to get this get this back and have a little go down there if that doesn't pay off then i'll be back in the corner which is just behind the camera and give that another little go so there's definitely more fish to be had as well let's get this one back and uh, try and get some more There we go, that's the uh, same rod again, the one that's going to the far margin. And uh, since you last saw me put the rod out, I did change over to casting the lead onto the far bank. Because I was going around anyway to put the bait in, it made sense to do so. Then lowering the rig in by hand, feeling it down, getting it right where I wanted it to. And uh, it's resulted in another lovely fish. Probably just about the biggest one for me, I'd say a nice mid-double. But pretty much average stamping here, beautiful fish. And one of those fish, if I lost it, I would have said it was much bigger because Hooked it obviously at 80 yards and it just kited on that 80 yard line all the way down the far margin. Got me solid in a few lilies at times, grating on things. Proper good scrap. But uh, when he popped up, not quite as big as I thought, but proper character. Little withered fins on some of the, well, big fins, but sort of 
black edges to them. I think he might even be blind or something's going on in that eye. But uh, yeah, these fish certainly have character. Lovely venue. And I think we've hit it at perfect time where the, the fish seem to be switching on because they're coming in absolutely covered in leeches. Every single one's got leeches. So they've been held up and sitting dormant for a while, but clearly they're up for a munch now, which is good for us. Lovely, let's get some snaps and slipping back. Well, uh, I'm not sure if Luke's told you what he's doing yet, but he's moved swim and I've called to him about three times in the last 40 minutes. First two times, unfortunately, luck was not on my side. I lost a fish and then the next one, hook link just parted in two, right where I, the coating strips back. So it's clearly been a weakness in the line. I hadn't noticed and uh, I think I've learned my lesson I have to check rigs every time before they go back out but I've put it back out again <laughs> fingers crossed third take lucky because this one's absolutely melted off and I've changed spots actually there has been so many fish showing midwater to the left of me and Luke's been catching a lot of fish down uh, the far end stalking today they're clearly held up down here and uh, so I'm just going to concentrate a bit more because he's going towards pads Oh, ping of his dorsal. <laughs> You're about to hear a lot of curse words then if that came off. But um, yeah, there's been a lot of fish showing. I've been casting rods to bubbles and things, but eventually I just thought I'd just have to whack one down there where they're showing. And I think within the last hour, this is the third bite. And hopefully this one comes in. It looks, from what I just got a glimpse, it looks the same sort of stamp of fish. One of the nice sort of low to mid double commons. Um, but yeah, it's good to get a few bites in the day as well. If I get this in, it will definitely swing my mood around from rather despondent and angry, probably at myself more than anything, to uh, a lot happier. I'm tying up a few more rigs now, so as soon as I get this, if I get this in, I'll be uh, unhooking it, taking the rig off and pinging it straight back out, because where there's three bites, hopefully there's three more. And all the fish have done the same when they've come in. They're getting quite close and then just do loops. I don't want him to catch the other rods. Unorthodox netting. Oh. Happy days. That's changed my mood very quickly from, yeah, pretty, um, pretty much wanting to just shut myself away in the bivvy and mope to happy again. Or lying in the uh, bottom of my mat right now is something which has swung my mood completely around because after two lost fish on the bounce I finally got this one in. Same spot, I've just been seeing fish showing all day, no, not all day because otherwise I would have moved on to it sooner but very recently a few shows put a uh, hook bait over to it, had a run, lost it, put one straight back out, had a run, lost it and then done it again and this one actually came in. It's actually deceivingly weighty like for the size of it, different proportions to the previous one I landed but uh, it's a bit wider this one a bit stranger more dumpy fish I suppose so it's quite thick set and all the fish we've caught have felt pretty solid so um, really good healthy fish and uh, lovely condition as well and it's great to be catching them from a venue that we typically wouldn't have fished uh, if it wasn't for our jobs really we're very lucky in the sense that we uh, get to fish all these different places and yeah, we can keep on going in the way we are today. It's been very productive, getting into a rhythm of things, finding spots that are producing. It's, uh, yeah, it's good fun. So I'll slip this one back again and I'll show you exactly how I'm fishing as well, which is completely different to Luke, which I'm sure he'll show you how he's fishing. But both of us are having good results. Well, the rods are now back out and actually it went out just before I filmed the fish just to optimise my chances of having a bite. And also want to apologise for any kind of mic issues we've been having today. Hopefully it's cleared up now. But I thought I'd talk you through the setup I'm using it's dead simple uh, the last year or so I have gone back to real simple tactics and one it's easier less to fumble around with and two I'm actually enjoying my fishing a lot more probably because of those reasons so I'm just going straight down to a lead clip system a fixed lead clip system and that lead will drop off on the take or if it gets into contact with any kind of uh, resistance so I'm fishing nice and safely and then I'm in direct contact with the fish Rig couldn't be simpler either, it's just skin link, I think it's 20 pound skin link, stripped back about an inch from the hook with a little bit of putty where that joins that, in my opinion, creates a slight hinge and helps to drop that hook down into the fish's mouth. A little bit of shrink tubing just to act as a kicker and then a simple hair rig and I've got a size 6 curved shank on there. 
Now, one other thing I'm doing is, because this lake has, well, it's fairly silty in places, I'm fishing some clear patches. Sorry, just a swirl on my spot caught my eye there. But uh, there's silt in places. You could go down the helicopter route, which Luke will get onto his tactics in a bit. I think he's going down that route. But it's not so thick that when you cast out, you don't get a drop or anything. It, you're still getting a drop. And I'm pretty confident that the setup I'm using it's still presented nicely on top of it. And there are a couple of little things I'm doing to help aid that and keep my hook bait presented nicely above the sail if my lead does sink in slightly. Now this isn't my own trick, this is something I've learned from uh, filming with Chile a few times. And that's just putting a splicing needle through a mesh bag of boys. So I've got a bag here of Escore Original and I put my splice needle through that mesh bag, hook it onto my hair, close the uh, gate and pull it through the mesh bag. So my hair is now through the mesh bag, add my hook bait on and put the hair in place like so. I've got the uh, hair stop in my mouth. I think there's no better place to store them once you've taken a hook bait off. I'm sure I'm not the only one that does that. Pull the hook bait tight to the hair and there we are. So the hook bait is now on and that hair is trapped on the mesh bag. And now hook the hook itself through a bit of the mesh bag in front. Could be a bit fiddly, depending on how long your hair is. There we are, now the, hair, the hook is trapped on the bag as well. So I've got the hook bait and hook separation. None of that's gonna spin around in the air. It's all fixed in place on that mesh bag. So when that lands, that does twofold. It's preventing tangles and the hook bait side of things. And it also acts as a kind of a, a parachute as that comes down, settles on top of the silt, that dissolves and you've got a, a big mouthful of boil leads and attraction around your hook bait. And that's all I'm doing. If it was silty than what this place is, then yes, I may go down the helicopter route so that I can settle much more uh, neatly on top of the silt. Well, this is how I've been fishing. It's been effective. I'm getting bites and I'm enjoying doing it. So uh, now this one's all tied up. Time to put this one back out on some bubblers I've seen just behind the camera whilst filming this piece. Okay, so it's probably about time to give you a little bit of an update on what I've been doing, how the day's gone. Um, so obviously I've done a little bit of stalking today. Um, it, it went pretty quiet after, after having those few fish last night, uh, which is what kind of prompted, prompted me to do a little bit of stalking. So yesterday evening, I put a little bit of bait in the swim behind me uh, in three different areas. And like I say, it got quiet overnight. I didn't actually have anything overnight whatsoever. Um, so I thought it was well worth bringing the rods in, going around, doing a little bit of stalking and hoping to get a couple of bites off the spots that I'd baited. And that obviously paid off really well, ended up with three fish during the day today. So yeah, more than made up with that. But whilst I was down here, it was really apparent how many fish were down here. So when I was doing, when I was stalking, I was right tight in the margins, but there was still a lot of fish showing actually out in open water. So with the fact that not a lot, not a lot happened last night in the swim that I was, and the amount of fish that I'd seen, it was kind of a no-brainer to come down this end and, and do the second night in this swim. The other factor as well is Joe's last three bites that he had were all on his furthest left rod, which is more down this way. So it shows that the fish have definitely moved because strangely enough, yesterday I was getting a couple of bites on my right rod, or sorry, my middle rod, which was the furthest right other than the margin one. And then Joe started getting a few bites and then I've been getting bites in the in the margins down this way. So it does seem that the fish have moved across. The wind has swung around slightly and it is gently flowing this way. It's not, not a strong wind like it was yesterday, but it is still, it is coming this way. So whether the fish are moving with the wind and they're all showing down this way, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that something could happen tonight. Now, I was gonna show you obviously shipping the rods out and, and how I'm approaching the swim but pretty much as soon as I got in here, there was a big patch of fizzing out there, so I cast a rod straight onto it. So that might go whilst we're doing this piece, you never know. But the other two rods, or all three rods, I'm actually gonna be shipping out with the pole to get them, get them sorted for the night. And there's a big lily bed pad, um, lily, lily pad bed on my left-hand side. So I'm gonna be get, shipping the left rod over to that one. Middle rod is gonna be going just out kind of mid-water and then the right rod I will probably be putting towards the aerator because there's been a lot of fish showing in the mid-water sort of range and around the aerator. So that's where they're all going to go. I'm going to give the, the rod that I cast to all the fizz in probably half hour and then I will start sorting all the rods out properly. I think it's going to be a wader job though. It's pretty tight swim so 
might have to get the waders, waders ready and uh, there could be a lot of fumbling tonight um, just by putting waders on. But anyway, I will keep you updated and we'll show you some clips of getting the rods out and things like that as well in a bit. There we go. That is all three rods sorted for the night. And uh, with the amount of fish that I've seen down here, somehow I don't think they'll actually be out all night. So fingers crossed me and Joe have a few tonight. And uh, if we do, don't worry, we'll be sure to show you them. But if not, then we'll catch up in the morning. Well, that rod didn't last in the water long. Uh, it was probably about 10 minutes after I put the final rod out that the right hand rod, which was the first I put out, went. So might have been in the water for about 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, right rod absolutely melted off. It was bent right round. And that was one that was kind of towards the aerator and where I've been seeing most of the fish down this end, really. So. Yeah, another one of the lovely little commons. Hopefully, hopefully tonight is a busy night and we might end up with one of the, one of the slightly bigger ones. Cool, well, I don't know about you, but I am freezing and I'm knackered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's a pretty much how I would put it as well. And you've got the uh, better end of the deal here doing this intro piece or morning piece in your bivvy because it's yeah. freezing sat on this bucket. The uh, weather has just done a, pretty much another 180. When we got here two days ago, it was sunny and pretty warm. Yesterday was overcast, a bit windy, but not as cold as it is today. And the wind has swung once again and completely pushing out of this bay down past me again. Yeah, it's been all over the place, the wind really. And I think the fish are probably moving on it as well, aren't they? Yeah. So um, obviously the main reason for the move yesterday and coming down this end of the lake was because the fish were here. Um, and it definitely paid off. Uh, as soon as I got in this swim, within about an hour, I'd had three bites. Um, I slipped a couple of them back because they were just the little commons like we've been having throughout the session. Um, and then overnight again, it went a little bit quieter. Uh, I did have had a, a slightly better common. Uh, I say slightly better, it was probably low double. Um, and then this morning, just on first light, or about seven o'clock, so a little bit after first light, um, had another bite on my right hand rod. So all the bites in this swim have been on that right hand rod. None of them have been further into the bay. Um, where I was actually catching them out of yesterday when I was stalking. So that makes me think that they've started moving down with the wind again. And then obviously that's kind of linked in with, with yeah, your success well, as well. That's good news from me. Like, I've not got a single rod in the water at the moment, I'm about to redo them. But uh, productive night, uh, off to a bad start actually, because at 1am the uh, long range rod, which is a case of casting on the bank, walking around and dropping it in, which is what I'm about to go and redo now was away, same bite as always, came in like a wet sock like the other ones have done, but this one never started fighting and it was a, a snotty little bream, so um, not the best thing to have at 1am in the morning. Then I had a palaver trying to get the rod back out over there, caught it in the tree, got it all back, got it back out, eventually got it on the uh, bank. So after walking round and back twice, I got that rig back in position and it proved worthwhile being uh, putting that effort in on that rod despite how tired I felt because in the sling uh, this morning was a lovely low 20 mirror and then shortly after that I had another one which uh, I think is around the up double low 20 mark so uh, we're going to get that out and see uh, my prizes and um, hopefully before we head on there'll be another bite each it's getting to the sort of greedy stage now I yeah think. I know well, I'm, I'm up to nine now and uh, it'd be nice just to break into them double figures so yeah I'm after one more Again, like Curly, I've got a couple to show you. Um, so I think let's get this coffee down me because it's well needed. And then uh, then we start filming a few fish. Sounds good. Okay, it's another one of the little plump commons from Wellham. And this is what a lot of the, uh, the fish me and Joe have been having have been like. But that doesn't mean they're all like that in here. There's a whole variety. We've had some really nice mirrors over the session. Some of the other guys that are fishing here, we've actually seen some really nice um, low 20 commons as well which are a similar sort of shape to these so they're, they're quite short but quite chunky little commons so really nice fish like I say some of the mirrors that we've been having as well are, are stunning fish so yeah a whole variety in here I'm going to slip this one back and then I've got the uh, the slightly bigger one to show you which is probably an upper double um, upper double common again similar sort of shape so he's a, a pretty cool little character so let's get this one back and then I'll show you the slightly bigger one Okay, and here you go. This is the uh, the one that I had at seven o'clock this morning. It's uh, it's actually the biggest that I've had from this trip. Nineteen pound twelve. Uh, we thought it was worth away because we thought it might have just scraped that twenty pound mark, but very close. But uh, 
yeah, didn't didn't quite make it. But like I said in, in the previous fish, there's so many different sort of fish in here, different sizes, shapes, weights, mirrors, commons. So it's definitely a definitely a venue that I'm looking forward to coming back to. And uh, fish like this make it well worth the three-hour drive. So let's get this back. Hopefully, I can get one more so I can get into double figures. But uh, if not, it's been a great session and first two nighter I've done for a long time. So yeah, really happy to get a few bends in the rod and uh, and sample some of the fish that are in here. So let's get this one back, then we'll go down and have a look at Joe's couple of mirrors that he's had. Uh, obviously still in the show and knee with a 20, but yeah, let's get this one back. Well, here was the first capture from last night and uh, it's been a dead set 20 since I landed it, since before we weighed it and uh, it's come up at 19 pound 14 so uh, you'll see a bit of continuity errors because we filmed the second fish before this one where i was pretty sure this was a 20 and it's not quite and i'm a i'm an honest man at 19 14 two ounces shy of the 20 mark i wanted didn't quite make it but how you cannot complain solid fish beautiful fish immaculate condition and there's still a chance of getting that 20 goal but um yeah sometimes honestly can be my downfall but i'd rather say it was 19 14 and have a a, a, a clean conscience and say it was a scraper bang on 20 or something duck thank you duck for ruining that but uh yeah very very happy with that a few stills slipping back and i'll show you the second fish fish number two not quite making it a brace of 20s but very welcome all the same at 18 pound four it's a lovely second capture from the night so uh once we get this one back i'll be slipping the rods back out and well, casting the rod over to the far bank and going and sticking it back in and hopefully have something else before we go but one of my targets when I was talking to Luke yesterday was I'd like to have a 20 and as you just saw that other one was uh, was just about done that for me very very happy sweet it better be 20 now <laughs> so as Joe mentioned I'm fishing completely differently to him and it's still catching fish so instead of using a leg clip setup like he is I'm actually using a helicopter setup Reason being, it's a little bit silty, so I know that that way, if the lead does plug into the silt a little bit, then you've got a bit of movement on the uh, on the leader. And talking of the leader, I'm using about a foot and a half of lead core. This comes down to a little bead, a little safety bead, so it will pop off if the fish does get snagged, and then the rig can just slide straight off it. Got another little bead at the bottom, and then a heli safe as well. So again, for fish safety, the lead can drop off if it does get snagged. Rig wise is a rig that I've been using mainly this year actually. Um, I can't take credit for it. I stole it off an Adam Pennon video when I filmed with him. Um, but it works really nicely, especially in silty lakes. It's basically like a reverse combi with a multi-section. So I've got quite a supple braid here. So again, if the lead does plug in and it actually goes in further than the top bead, it takes a little bit of the rig in. It's nice and supple to actually sit flush on the bottom. Got a little bit of putty, a strip back braid, and then that's tied onto like a, a bristle filament material with an Albright knot with a little bit of shrink tube just to cover that. The reason being for this is it gives a really stiff hook section. So once that's in, it's going to be nailing them. It's going to be really hard to deal with. And uh, all of the bites that I've had so far and where I've used this previously, it is nailing them right in the bottom lip, right in the centre. So it's definitely working. And I've got quite a bit of faith in this considering I've only started using it this year. Hook bait wise, I'm using a little S-core pop-up and that's just cut down just to balance it so it falls nice and nice and slowly, uh, but it's still enough to keep this section popped up. So the putty holds it down. And then, like I say, you've got loads of movement from the strip back bit of braid and then a really stiff material here. So let's get it back out there. Hopefully have a few more bites. I'm around the 27, I'd say. Yeah. What did I just say? 27. 27 on the nose. Is it really? Have a look. 26, 14, I'd say. Oh, two ounces off this time. Well done. Cheers. You got your goal of a 20. Yeah. 
an actual 20, not, not my <laughs> hope and pray is a 20. Well, I was desperate to try and get my 10th fish of the session and uh, I left the rods out probably a little bit longer than I should have, really hoping that that 10th fish would come along and uh, put it this way, I'm glad I did leave it out for, for a bit too long. It's going to make the three hour drive home a lot more bearable. Uh, what a cracking fish. So this went 26 pound 14 ounces and uh, yeah, what a way to end the piece. It's uh, a mega looking common and this is actually the middle rod which is it's been out all night, so it's been been out the best part of about 18 hours. Well, there's no point rebaiting it this morning. I know it's going to be presented. So uh, yeah, excellent to uh, to have that roar off. And uh, I think Joe will agree. It's been a pretty epic session. We've had loads of cool fish, awesome little venue, and uh, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get back here. Yes, definitely. Lovely owner has invited us back whenever we want, yeah. which I'm sure we'll take him up on. But uh, I did manage one last fish as well, sat on the deck and uh, it was nowhere near the size of this. It's the smallest one in the session, but uh, look at that. Absolutely immaculate. What well up, mate. All right, thank you very much. Well, you finish the session. Yeah, let's get some steels and a slipper back and drive home wet and soggy, stinking a fish. So with a big smile. Oh, that's heavy. Oh. Well, what a way to end an epic few days or a couple of nights in the shape of this lovely 26 pound, 14 ounce common. Got soaking wet sleeves, but I couldn't care less. Yeah, what a result. <laughs>